The pandemic has brought about a radical shift in the way we perceive life. With people striving just to go out, critical resources being stretched, and the essence of our very freedom shrinking. Today, we'd like to see the role of art during coronavirus and the effects that it has on museums, galleries, and outdoor exhibitions. My moderator today is Ms. Akanksha Vadwani, who is a Gordon Square International Award winner for, for MA in Art Management and Art Policy at the Burke Beck University of London. Akanksha is an art academician and an arts manager and has experience in working with art institutes of highest respect in the capital city. In the past, she has worked with the Lalit Kala Academy, Ministry of Culture, Culture New Delhi, as a program assistant. NIV Center as, her, as their main curator and gallery manager and as a center of arts manager with artist and art board, Gurgaon. Also, she has been a guest faculty in different art institutions from time to time. She is also a fundraiser and has managed to achieve several funds, national and international, for different art organizations and institutions. Very recently, she presented her first international paper at the first international craft festival, Kokan, Uzbekistan, in collaboration with World Craft Council, fully funded by the Uzbekistan government. Currently, she is working with the World University of Design as an, as an assistant professor with the School of Visual Arts. She is the co-editor of a monthly journal by the name of Visual Times, which is abreast with the latest art-related events in and around the city. My first speaker for this session is Ms. Lubna Sen, is the founder of The Art Route. She is an independent art curator and consultant and has curated significant projects with the Indira Gandhi National Center for Art New Delhi, Lalit Kala Academy, and the Museum of Folk Art. As a consultant, she mentors, emerge, mentors emerging collectors to appreciate and acquire fine art. Lubna has an MBA with 15 years of corporate experience. She is also an MA in History of Art from, Nepal, from National Museum Institute and has been trained in art markets from Sotheby's Institute, Institute London. During the first 30 days of the lockdown, she created an online art project, The Spirit Remains Unlocked, involving 30 artists who worked for first 30 days of the lockdown into a virtual art exhibition with over 100 works held between July to September. The next interesting panelist we have today here is Satyajit Dave. He is an independent curator and art consultant working in the visual arts sector. After pursuing a bachelor's and master's degree in art history and aesthetics, from the Faculty of Fine Arts, Maharaja Sayajya Rao University of Vadodara, he was selected as the Citrusin Residence for the Pierce 2016 Residency at the Koj in New Delhi. His work as a research director for the Kona Foundation enabled him to work towards its prestigious textile project, Escape, in a diorama for the Whitworth Museum in Manchester in 2017. His background in art and history and research pushes his work into the capacity of a guest faculty at various universities like Mumbai, Maharaj, Maharaj Sarji Rao University of Baroda, National Institute of Fashion Technology, Amity University, Mumbai, on subjects such as Indian art and architecture history, Western art and architecture history, visual culture analysis, curating art and design, and architecture, among many other diverse topics. He regularly contributes to various magazines and journals in the capacity of a writer, subject expert. His recent curatorial project is mega exhibition titled The Print, Matter and Matrix, which opened at the Sridhar, Sridharani Gallery at the Triveni Kala Sangam in New Delhi. The exhibition explored printmaking in India across five segments, academic practice, the book, digital and alternative printing, reproductions, and 3D printing through the works of over 60, 60 artists across these sections. A very good evening, everyone. Thank you for Thank joining you. in. Uh, as we all know, we are here for this particular event, um, which says uh, role of art during COVID times, effect on museum galleries and outdoor exhibitions. 
we have with us today mr satyajit dev ms lubna sen mr neeraj sharma ms neepa sharma thank you all for joining in we welcome you all the leading curators from indian art industry with a vast experience of hosting shows national and international thank you sir before uh, we could formally begin i'll quickly uh, give each other a formal introduction just i am not going to speak more but like two liners so that we know each other uh, more properly and then we can start the discussions around um, i would start with satyajit sir satyajit dev is an independent curator and art consultant working in visual art sector after pursuing a bachelor's and master's degree in art history and aesthetics from the faculty of fine arts maharaja uh, sahaji rao university of vadodara he was selected as a critic residence for the pierce 2016 mm. residency at khoj in new delhi thank you so much sir for joining in we have with us lubna se ms lubna se is a founder of the art route a platform dedicated to education development and promotion of visual arts it has always been an endeavor at the art route to promote art forms and artists who deserve a broader platform of recognition she is an independent art curator and consultant she has curated culturally significant projects with indira gandhi national center of arts new delhi lalit kala academy new delhi and museum of folk art as a consultant she mentors emerging collectors to appreciate and acquire fine arts Lubna has an MBA with a prior 15 years of corporate experience. Thank you so much Lubna ma'am for joining in today. We have with us Neeraj sir. Neeraj introduces himself as a focused, resultant, oriented and progressive professional photographer who has been working actively in media art industry for more than a decade and a half now. His artistry lies in his successful use of photography as a medium of expression and his distinctive strength in the proficient and intensive use of lights both natural and studio. He says he is not a trigger happy shutterbug. He likes to make every shout count. He believes in complete dedication when he is at work resulting adherence to deadlines. Thank you so much Neeraj sir for joining in. Thanks thanks for inviting us. quickly i would move to nipa ma'am uh, nipa ma'am has a vast experience as an art collector uh, she has been working very closely with artists and architects from delhi um ncr and ludhiana she has also been staying uh, for uh, 11 years i'm sorry i think you missed out something i'm based out of chandigarh so uh, my my main stay is chandigarh punjab ludhiana Right, ma'am. This was the next line I was about to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, um, uh, ma'am is based in Chandigarh currently. Thank you, ma'am. Also, uh, she has a vast experience. She has been staying in abroad, and she is a avid lo uh, lover. And she has been curating a lot of national and international projects. Thank you so much, Nipa, ma'am, for joining in. Thank you. so uh, before we formally begin um, i once again welcome each of you for being with us and taking out so much of time so uh, i would quickly start with lubna ma'am um lubna ma'am uh, just a small question uh, before we start formally how how the pandemic has come so far with you okay is it a personal question or a profession question <laughs> um let's take it on the both the fronts all right Uh, uh learning uh, on both uh, both grounds i mean this year is something i think none of us will forget in our lifetime and uh, it is uh, really a time for me both professionally and personally to set back uh, you know regroup and rethink what i am doing how i am doing this is a time for all of us i think to reorganize ourselves and uh, because as the new order and the new normal and all that that we are facing and uh, one thing that i have definitely i have learned is that i know nothing about the future and rest of the world also knows nothing about the future this i'm very sure of no one can be certain of anything this is a take away for me from today's event nothing no one knows about the future so that let's not panic about it and stay right. calm in the yeah. present Thank you so much, ma'am. Nipa, ma'am, uh, I would quickly ask the same question. 
what is your takeaway or uh, take on pandemic you know again if it's a personal thing then i think i have gained tremendously uh, i've kind of re- everything that uh, is in me and my even my future plans are based on what has uh, transpired in the last 4 5 months so and as far as work is concerned i was in any case uh, beginning to take a different path and so this pandemic has given me time to have thought it out well so i certainly have a plan for sure that is so nice so while we would let to know each other we would get to hear so many perspective looking forward for such interesting conversations sir quickly coming to neeraj sir on this uh actually uh this phase has not affected me much because i have an advantage of being a photographer so uh, from the day one i picked up my camera my kit and it traveled a lot because uh, i got all the permissions uh, with me and it traveled around six states including rajasthan um, delhi haryana punjab even chandigarh himachal so uh, but the difference which i found is that it was full of people it was uh, earlier i am talking about before this uh, uh, bad phase bad patch of our lives actually i must say so the roads were empty and uh, nothing was there much to shoot but yes of course i have documented it well and maybe in the coming years uh, you can call it uh, something kind of i archival images so on both fronts personal and uh, professional uh, it was a great experience it was a great learning experience as well so nice thank you so much sir for sharing your input i would quickly uh, go back to satyajit sir here uh yeah personally for me i think uh, uh, again as uh, uh, mr sharma mentioned that uh, there isn't there hasn't been much of a difference for me is because of the fact that uh, i run my practice online so we have an online art gallery and i run my practice online since 2013 14 so it was uh, at that particular point of time when i started out it was it was like nobody's going to have you know like look at art online and uh, there was a lot of resistance that i was facing from the art world and uh, luckily now it, like everyone's online so uh, because of that uh, we are at a we are at a, at a slight advantage and uh, curatorially speaking yes of course a lot of my uh, large scale projects which are there they have been canned at least for the next year year and a half or two because uh, a the funding has dried up and uh, b the other thing is that uh, again because of safety reasons and concerns one can't really try and you know have large gatherings but uh, the flip side of that or rather the the other side of that is that we're able to do a lot of things online now and uh, people are receptive more than anything else people are receptive now. so that's i mean it it is it has worked out uh, in my advantage <laughs> so nice to hear that uh, on that note i have a quick question to satyajit sir when you say yeah. people were resistant earlier uh, because you were there and you must have never thought of it that you know i am been very way, well advanced in planning because we are 2020 is coming i'm sure you must have not thought of this you had your own idea of running an online yeah. gallery yeah. so yeah. on that note do you find any flexibility in people's nature coming now of accepting or probably just exploring the artwork or reaching out to you in person so see essentially from the collector front there was always this interest or there was always this inquisitive uh, inquisitiveness to look look out for things which are new off to look out for things in terms of like technology and things like that uh, the resistance primarily was from the art fraternity where you know like there were things which were done in a set way or they were done in a set manner and uh, now because they are not able to do all of that uh, they are they're trying to become more flexible uh, i'd say the resistance was primarily from the art world not from the collector side or not from the uh, you know like view, viewership front it was primarily from the artist front and the curatorial front and things like that. 
true i i completely understand that why i say when you when you mentioning uh, from the artist or probably the uh, art field works uh, when the resistance is happening because most of the time people are not reaching to people they love to talk about the people they don't talk about what is really essential in the art world so i think that was also been really bridged during this time so let's take a good take away from this pandemic and see things must improve and let's see yeah. as lumna ma'am said nothing is really predictable so let's just stay in the future thank you so much so on that note i have a quick question to you satyajit sir um like uh, what are your views in terms of changing role of galleries and mu uh, museums during lockdown i mean do you think that uh, there's a vast change or uh, as you said there's there's going to be a major crunch of funding as you have already mentioned that but then how do you see that I mean, you know evolving in coming time or there'll be only virtual shows happening or will the shows will will go to physical spaces and there would be a restriction of audiences how do you see that coming up or uh, how how will it affect the general audience in terms of artists collectors buyers how do you see that i think it's a great thing uh, i look at it from the positive uh, uh, perspective is because of the fact that uh, earlier we were not really open to looking at Uh, works and looking at like having that interaction with a wide range of people or a broad range of people but now luckily because of the pandemic what has happened is that uh, people have opened up in terms of the idea of okay maybe i should also go and have a look at that also here's the other thing with digital exhibitions since nobody is actually seeing your presence uh, people are able to sort of navigate much more freely and without any hesitation so because of which what has happened is that uh, uh, the third wall so to say has sort of come off and i think that's a great thing in terms of funding again what i feel is that uh, the economy is going to take i think about 18 about 18 to 20 20 months to sort of uh, get back on track a uh, global economy because again we're just like seeing a second wave uh, take over europe right now of the pandemic uh, of the coronavirus uh, so that is going to take some time but i do not think that exhibitions will happen only online uh but what i feel is that there will be a lot of innovation at the digital front or other acceptance of an innovation at at the digital front because there's a lot of exhibition technology which is there uh which is out there which is uh, which is being used extensively it's just that uh, south asia i feel wasn't really receptive to that technology for a very long time or was hesitant uh, would be the other side of the story but uh, and again you have to look at the larger ecosystem even if we were accepting you didn't really have high speed internet connections now everyone has a, a smartphone with a 4g internet and access to 4g internet more than anything else so i think all of these things have uh, uh, gradually made some uh, some some change and some positive impact so yeah but i feel exhibitions will there will be more digital exhibitions let me put it that way uh, physical exhibitions will never die down because the experience of an artwork in the flesh you cannot have that in the digital space but there will be more digital exhibitions and there will be more digitally created works to be viewed and acquired and appreciated specifically in the digital space so that shift will be uh, slightly more uh, quick but the uh, physical exhibitions are they will they will not be dying that's for sure so that that paradigm shifting from more uh, you know physical space to be more actively on the digital space is it going to affect the artist psyche um, i uh, it's it's an open question i would say let lubna ma'am uh, should cater this one and then do you repeat the question akansha ma'am uh, do you think that this whole uh, paradigm of shifting from uh, physical spaces to digital spaces does this going to affect the psyche of artist in person or um, how how do you do you think that as a curator you have seen you being uh, you know being really active on your instagram with your virtual shows is that been affecting in terms to artist psyche or are there any more concerns you are facing from the artist front no i think uh, uh, so at, in continuum to your earlier question what i what happened to me in pandemic is that i immediately got into a remote art project Uh, which is called the spirit remains unlocked which started from the first uh, day of the national lockdown and which ended in a virtual um, art exhibition 
so what according to my uh, and i totally uh, you know resonate with what sataji is saying most of what he's saying uh, basically digital environment is uh, you ca- it's not an end uh, to the whole thing it's not the final solution it's an enabler and people will realize it more and more that that something that was there was a hesitation earlier that is that is just gone and now it is it is going to run parallelly and obviously nothing can uh, substitute the real environment for an artist it is great because uh, in this kind of situation because where i worked with 30 artists at that time and we showed about 100 artworks so you know when there is no physical event happening then uh, first of all it is just for an artist just the sale is not the only thing it is the uh, ability and um, you know the opportunity to show their works you know being mentored being uh, you know peer guided uh, those though uh, just to show the works you know just to show what you are doing is an opportunity that suddenly they felt that it's not there so once this whole digital thing came and once in i i also experienced in my virtual uh, you know the whole remote residency which moved into the virtual exhibition that everybody wants to showcase their work so for artists it is excellent um, in fact there are artists who could not work with i mean like for neeraj mitra for example whom we know uh, most of us uh, he just said uh, allow me to be in your exhibition you know it's uh, because for an artist is important to have the audience uh, whichever way uh, with its limitation but it's always always better and uh, so that that i don't think artist ever would have had a problem as uh, satyajit said that the art world was having a hesitation in doing all this thinking that this is not the right thing to do and it is you know it's a brick and mortar model and you know we have to do one on one and all that people have to come but once that is removed uh, then it is better for the artist it's more exposure for the artist and uh, i think at this point of time uh talent is something uh, and content these are the two things i feel that will be the biggest differentiator now on going on because it is becoming more democratic right because you are being able to showcase through various um uh, means you are doing your artists are uh, reorganizing their own social media portfolios there is virtual exhibitions happening so the cost of these exhibitions obviously are really minimal compared to uh, putting up uh, something for 10 days 7 days uh, or the art fairs so there is a lot of democratization is anyway happening that will allow new fresh talent also to come in not only an artist for curators for galleries for people who are passionate about art and promoting art the whole thing which was kind of little uh, i would say um, little clickish uh, if i were to use that word i think it's going to kind of spread out a little and overall it's going to be good for the uh, thing i mean uh, i would say there are more positives uh, in this year that has happened than negatives yes of course loss of income and all that has happened those are things that we can't uh, disagree but for a long term this is a good thing that has happened is what i feel so eventually uh, if i if i sum up dubna ma'am you're saying that we all have together learn a lot of life skills of working together or being more human or getting lot of people together on the ground so this i've all got lot of things uh, in person as a take away from this all lockdown right, right. right. so true right. so true thank you lubna ma'am i will quickly ask uh, neepa ma'am on that note ma'am uh, what is your take on the same situation do you think um, uh, there has been more uh, avenues been open for artists or uh, do you think that, that was a major challenge for you you know i live in a different kind of a setting i'm not in delhi i'm not in bombay or gurgaon where you know there's many more people to to talk to so i deal with my clients in a very personalized manner and i think i've done really well during the lockdown and i feel this is because um there were nobody was going out nobody was buying anything there was nothing to do and people had some money which was just lying there i guess you know people are used to shopping and doing stupid things eating out so they just wanted to do something nice and feel good about it so during the lockdown what happened was the the smaller ticket artworks really went 
And I didn't have an exhibition or anything, not even online. It was just word of mouth. And I would just, and again, I'm not saying it's a lot, lot, but I'm just really happy about it. So it's, it's a different kind of selling where I've never really, I didn't have to market it. You know, I didn't have to have an exhibition. I didn't have to curate a whole lot of works for sale. So it's, it's, it was a really interesting, um, pleasant thing that came out of the lockdown. I don't know what category to put it in, but this is a different kind of sale altogether. So true. I would ask Satyajit, sir, to, what is your take on this, sir, when ma'am could sell a lot of artworks without promoting and at the same time, uh, we are mentioning, as Lumna ma'am mentioned or Neera Sat mentioned, that there are a lot of new platforms have come on, but at the same time, ma'am hasn't picked up any platform. She was just doing one one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, what do you think about this? Parallelly, there was another market which has been developed. Yeah, because like people are free at home. What are they going to do? <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. just, they're bored of staring at their blank walls. <laughs> they're yeah. bored of staring at their blank walls. And the other thing is, this is the first time that people are actually taking the time to actually like look at the work. Yes. You would have collectors, you would have artists. I mean, let's just face it. All of us, when we entered exhibitions, uh, the, the interaction with the work wasn't really the kind of interaction that you would want, right? Uh, you as a viewer would want because you would like go to a space and you would end up meeting somebody and like there would be that entire gung ho of that and uh, you wouldn't have the opportunity to actually spend time with the work. Uh, what, had, what the lockdown enabled was the fact that uh, people just sat there with their tablets or with their smartphones or with their laptops and they just kept like browsing works. So whatever they liked, uh, they genuinely like, they could more than like, I mean, that's not the right word, but they could genuinely respond to some artworks. And that is what enabled the entire process or that, that is what drove the sales. Uh, because this is the first time that you, you have people actually respond to works. Right. right. Uh, and with a lot of time attached. So true. So the whole connect could, uh, you know, develop rather than getting distracted with people on the opening and wine and cheese. So it was just yeah. direct direct connection yeah yeah also also let me uh, say this other thing uh, i do see a very very strong shift or a very very uh, strong parallel uh, market emerging where the ability to acquire works directly from the studio is going to have a paradigm shift on the entire gallery ecosystem okay uh, at the same time, at the same time, let me put it this way, the gallery ecosystem will also benefit extensively from this entire, uh, this entire affair because the dynamics of uh, commerce between the artist, the gallery and the collector are going to change. And there is going to be a pivotal change in, in this entire ecosystem. So I would say you just highlight more how, if you could just, uh, you know, uh, give us an example and then it would help us to understand more because this was my next question that how do you think that galleries are going to be getting affected or in whatever ways, positive ways, negative ways, how do you see that coming? Because the, the yeah, role of ahead. the gallery will be extremely, extremely curatorially driven now uh, because uh, you cannot just put up an exhibition anymore and uh, you know expect some interaction. People are going to want to engage with content which is extremely, extremely uh, engaging and at the same time, extremely accessible. Uh, you cannot, you can no longer have uh, extremely dense curatorial wall texts. I have had a problem with dense curatorial wall texts from my college days. So that's another story altogether. But you will not be able to sustain that practice. Uh, the other thing that is going to happen is that. Uh, since collectors now have access to the artist studio, uh, they would expect the gallery to bring in a very, very strong content driven exhibition uh, or extremely contextual exhibitions. Uh, the role of the gallery is slowly going to get more museumized, if I may say, say so. Uh, so and then the museums themselves are going to face a, a whole new set of challenges because uh, here you have uh, galleries which are going to be commercial uh, who are going to be doing great content driven uh, uh, exhibitions 
So the role of the museum, I'm not very sure as to where and how that would be going or what direction it will take, but surely they are going to face a challenge. That's True. for sure. True. Neeraj, uh, what do you think about it? Uh, do you think the way Satyajit sir is mentioning that the role of galleries is going to take, uh, it's going to have a complete shift because they have to be more, uh, you know, more conscious of putting up shows, if I would say that word, that would be the right word rather than seeing. They are already very conscious. It's just that the kind of content that you produce, uh, it's, people are going to be very, very critical of that. People yeah, are going I, to be very I, critical I yeah, I do agree with uh, Satyajit ji. And, uh, but again, uh, what I feel is that uh, uh, we have to be optimistic always. And uh, as he says that uh, this digital platform is uh, uh, going to be our future thing for the artists and art lovers and collectors even. So uh, one thing which I would uh, like to mention here, when we used to curate uh, things physically, you know, physical exhibitions, so we... Uh, have to hire some PR agency or we go via some other channel to publicize the event. Now, what the positive thing is coming out, suppose you are having an exhibition of 20 people, 20 artists, and they all have become your public relation managers, basically. So you have a vast, wider range of, uh, you know, uh, viewers. And that too also not to a limited area, limited uh, periphery, it goes worldwide. So I take it as a positive thing that uh, you uh, are getting more public relation officers with you and to reach masses. So this is digitally, it is a uh, great uh, thing happening. And, but yes, of course, uh, we will definitely missing the, uh, we are missing the physical thing that we used to go to the galleries. We interacted with artists that what is the thought behind the painting and also now uh, we have to shift it, shift it to the uh, this thing, virtual thing. And that is the uh, crux of the thing that, yes, of course, this is a new platform for, uh, for us. As initially we started from WhatsApp, when the uh, lockdown was announced, earlier we used to go for the WhatsApp, then we shifted to Facebook. And now we are sitting here and uh, talking on Zoom. So we are also upgrading ourselves. And I think when you have to have in the market, you have to go with the flow. And uh, today's scenario is that you have to adopt this digital platform. True. Thank you, Neeraj, sir, for sharing your bit. Uh, I would quickly uh, reach back to Lugna, ma'am, on this. Lugna, ma'am, as Satyajit, sir, mentioned about that there's going to be a shift for the galleries also. Do you think there's going to be a complete challenge in terms of curators while putting up these shows? The, um like everybody else curators also have to reinvent themselves this is what i feel the galleries are uh, as already discussed they are reinventing themselves the curators also need to figure out a lot of things maybe collaboration is something that i feel that has uh, like for example right after i can give my personal example and it just naturally happened right after my virtual exhibition which i curated then i went on to co-curate with six international curators, another digital exhibition. Looking at that, there is another one that is coming. So, which is all collaboration. It is not, uh, you know, it is not always a single thing. That is one thing that I can see uh, that uh, can happen. It's actually given more creative um, uh, opening for a curator. You know, today, if I want to do something and I'm itching to do something, personally, I'm saying as a curator, I can, earlier I would, with that limitation of I need a venue and I need to do anything, I need the funding, I can just go ahead and create a story and create a narrative and have something done, you know, uh, you know, a curatorial project done online is also something that opportunity, which was always there, but we never noticed it's just, uh, you know, now people can just use it and I'm using it uh, right now. So for me, I think I've, I'm seeing a lot more freedom in my uh, way of doing things. I don't need to wait for anything to create a, a, a narrative and a, and a curatorial project. I really don't need to. I need a very minimum resources is enough for me to do that. Um, that is one thing that I feel. But I also feel that for particularly for individual uh, curators. Uh, and uh, as I am, uh, like, you know, uh, as I said that it's, it, 
now no longer the art should not be just for the big players it should be for everybody so uh, there it would be good to have a digital ecosystem like you know like a platform where curators can come and show their works um, you know I, what how i'm trying to uh, articulate this as let's say there is an india habitat center or a lalit kala academy or a or or a cultural center where people actually take the hire the venue and they do something uh they they create or there are workshops happening or there are shows happening uh, a parallel digital ecosystem of that would be great to have where artists are also contributing art curators are contributing there are thought leaders who are who are talking there is more uh, dialogue that is happening digitally because now we are since we have accepted digital and digital is a powerful way to actually educate and increase the awareness which is sadly lacking in india of art so that part a digital ecosystem if that can be created which connects all the complicated system that we call the art market uh, that would be great uh, uh, you know uh, it would be great for individual curators like me or uh, independent artists uh, uh, you know or smaller galleries uh, and and all that and by that i just don't mean e-commerce sites i mean a uh, platform which is you know uh, a yeah. cultural digital platform something yeah. like that would be really on my wish list actually so nice that is again itself an idea lubna man i wish this could materialize sometime because this is such a thoughtful idea where you have lot of like minded people on a single platform and then you think alike and plan something and that is doable unlike you have to think and sit how the funding is going to be managed what platform what artist what venue opening right right on and so forth but things right. like this this is such a visionary understanding that where right. people like you are given a vision to the whole industry of people as you mentioned for people like us who are yes. just you know in the market they are struggling they are working they want to create right. a market so yeah. that will indeed open lot of more uh, possibilities i would say Exactly. Uh, and and also as you mentioned that you know as even irats have mentioned that social media itself is big been a game changer for a lot of people now yeah also if i were to add uh, the as i as getting discussed the role is really we really got to redefine our roles like for example the gallery's role as satyajit said uh, has to be redefined and they are already redefining themselves even for curators the i feel that now we should start aggressively integrating with the society you know we, we are always looked at something on a silo and people who are art lovers and art connoisseurs should come so that reaching out uh, process uh, which is and uh, now digital has enabled us we should utilize that to uh, as thought leaders as uh, um you know to increase the appreciation of art and that by this i mean any form of art really uh, all forms of art so that as a communication and uh, you know uh, and do innovative programming uh, and through different thing that is something maybe in another uh, i would say a responsibility that anybody who's in art should take and including uh, curators you know reaching out to public and increasing the general uh, Uh, uh awareness you know the healthy appreciation for art that that should be there by now you know in our in our country so true i i completely second on you on that note because there are times when you know when the spaces are restricted when the exhibitions are restricted to certain spaces lot of audience could not make it i will share one of my personal experiences last year i was at ngm in mumbai and being as an assistant there at that time of moment i have realized that people were never used to come on weekdays bombay is such a such a stressful yeah. city they will never come on weekdays we were used to wait for people that they should drop by only saturday and sunday only those people were used to drop by who are really interested so i think that is something should be a big thing can bridge the gap actually right. yeah okay. what we are doing now can bridge that yeah. gap this should be a big take away from lockdown satyajit sir on that note i have a question for you as ma'am said that uh, there should be a portal where a lot of thought uh, leaders should come together and uh, a parallel market should run what do you think about this and do you think more should be added if you have certain key takeaways we would love to hear on that from you also sir yeah so essentially uh, i completely second uh, what you were saying and in fact uh, the portal that i run we are essentially doing this so we are multiple, so we had a e-commerce section 
which we were running since the past four or five years. Uh, we are just launching our exhibition section uh, where we are collaborating with young curators. We're hiring young curators. Uh, at the same time, we are also starting a e-learning e uh, uh, portal as an extension to our existing website, uh, which is essentially going to function as a digital cultural uh, learning space. Uh, and again, we have, we have collaborated with some of the most interesting uh, professors uh, currently who are teaching at various colleges across the country, art, design, architecture, music, so on and so forth. Uh, we are also, so essentially, the, these are the kind of initiatives which are necessary. Uh, the other thing that I'm uh, considering that I'm doing this on, like doing this myself, so I have a first-hand experience and what I feel is that uh, it works out to be more effective uh, from the post, from the prom promoter perspective as well, because uh, your overheads are very low. Yeah. Uh, if I wanted some, if I wanted to call somebody from IIT Kanpur to come and deliver a lecture to a set of people in Bombay, I will have had to, I would have had to spend minimum 50, 60 grand behind that. So uh, versus that money is now being allocated towards content. That money is now being yeah. allocated towards creating the digital platform. Uh, so in that regard, it's become much more effective. Number one, number two, I'm able to cater to a entire South Asian audience. So true. Uh, the professor true. need not travel from Kanpur. The students need not, uh, the participants need not travel from wherever they are. And uh, we are able to sort of, you know, navigate and manage this entire thing online in the digital space. Uh, the, the biggest benefit is that uh, people are receptive to these ideas now, uh, which they want at what particular point of time. Right. The lockdown has made it uh, that much easier for people who are who are genuinely interested in content, as Rupna said, who are genuinely interested in ideas, who are genuinely interested in the space and the idea of being thought leaders. Um, it's their time. So true. Yeah? Uh, That's money, so true. capital or money is not going to be anything more than an enabler. It is just an enabler now. Right. It will not be anything more than an enabler because you could spend 25 lakhs, 30 lakhs on PR, uh, but if your content doesn't really meet a certain expectation, people are not going to engage. Right. Yeah. Because see, understand this, it's easy to start a YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, if I'm an art student, like a lot of people from MSU, from JJ, from uh, Delhi College of Art, a lot of students, they've started art channels like on YouTube. And it is, it is so refreshing to hear their perspective because their, their students were still studying. Uh, then the way that they engage with the arts is completely different from how we would, you know, like want to or think of engaging. And for them, it's like they're sitting in their houses. They have a smartphone or they have some, they have a DSLR camera. They have a basic understanding of like uh, uh, edit, video editing and they're, they're doing their thing. Uh, so in terms of that, the entire strategy now is going to be content driven and uh, people who don't understand that. And when I say content driven, here's the other thing. Uh, yes, there is an issue of accessibility in terms of location, but the art world also has an issue of accessibility from the perspective of language. Mm. We That's don't use English. We use art history. Let's just be very clear about that. Yes. We use art history. Our language is art history. Our language is not English. So, because even people who have studied art history, we face pro problems like at times, like, you know, trying to de decode or decipher a pure wall text. So your language has to be accessible. And uh, the more regional language that we're able to cater to, considering it's a digital medium now, it's, it's more cost effective and one can, uh, it's going to be better. That is because so there aren't avenues in terms of access in terms of language if you can't read or if you can't just like even like read a uh, exhibition title and understand what it tries to say you're not going to want to engage right so that's the context which is so true i mean when you you talk about language i think that's the one thing people has to understand because how do people connect first time is language then they come up to visuals no so language is one thing which has to be really bridged and that was going to be a game changer altogether um, and I think as Lugna Ma'am mentioned, the platform like these could really uh, play an evident role in changing the whole game scenario in the art world completely. I would quickly uh, reach to Nipa Ma'am on that. 
Neeva ma'am, what is your take on this when people are talking about having a parallel, uh, you know, world creating on digital uh, sites for art? What do you think about it? Uh, how's your take on it? Well, like Lubna mentioned, that this lockdown has made us actually take the step, the digital step, because there is no other way out. That is the future. So um, I think that's here to stay. And the sooner we integrate it with our mode of marketing, selling, or whatever you call it, uh, the better for us. And if we can get innovative on that, nothing like it. Because that's here to stay. You can't wish it away anymore. So the sooner we innovate, the sooner we integrate, the better for everybody. That is so, so nicely put, Nipa, ma'am. Thank you so much. Just the last question before we wind up this session. It has been so inter uh, interactive. I didn't realize that we are already 50 minutes past. Uh, just the last question. Uh, it's an open question. Anybody uh, would love to take it. We would love to hear your uh, views on it. I'd like any key suggestions to the artists because uh, uh, being archival uh, documented or being on uh, on the internet, we are hearing a lot from them that they they suddenly you know, they they they're getting this there's certain uh, stagnation coming in their process because they're not able to go to galleries. There not much interaction happening in terms of personal interaction. Obviously, there are a lot of virtual interactions happening. So, any key suggestions you would love to give to the artists? who are facing now, there's a, some sort of stagnation happening. As Satyajit also mentioned that the whole idea of flesh, you know, when the when the paintings are on the wall and then interacting with them is altogether different. And um, is, is there any key uh, suggestions you want to give to certain artists who are there and they're facing this stagnation and they think now it's high time to come out of their zones and start exhibiting in the spaces like gallery spaces i would say lubna man do you want to um, answer this and then we can quickly reach to satyajit on this um i guess in our personal life when we stagnate what do we do we try and learn a new skill or uh, we try and uh, you know reskill ourselves in something um I guess this is, uh, of course, it's been nine months. I can't just say that uh, if it continues, people will get uh, tired of uh, uh, being at home. But this is this is a great opportunity for artists to reskill themselves. I feel, and uh, um, uh, and uh, of course, the conditions were ideal for most artists who like the solitary environment. But I think now it has gone beyond that, and you know, it has started affecting our life, our economy, and all that stuff. So uh, one is reskilling or uh, upgrading one skill uh, is something that one can uh, look at. And of course, uh, since the, uh, once again, um, maybe have um, uh, developed those, how does one market oneself, uh, th those kind of skills and those kind of knowledge. And um, I guess um, what artists do the best, the grit and the passion that they continue to do that. I mean, that's, I guess uh, without that, there is, you know, it, it, it won't be possible. And I think most artists know that in their heart. I mean, it could be a bad day or a good day or something, but most people whom I talk to know that, that this is, you know. Uh, it's gonna be there. And the space one, so one has to deal with it and how best they deal with it. I've seen a lot of artists, as I mentioned, a sculptor who's painting, a painter who's doing photography, and it's yeah. completely and across the board. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, maybe others can also add to it. I'm just seeing it completely across the board. Everybody's yeah. trying out a new medium. Right. Um, uh, share. Right. I think, I think the, this particular aspect of adding new skills or uh, upscaling our latent skills uh, is applicable to each one of us, whether as a curator, as an artist or whatever, innovative means of marketing, reaching out to people in through different methods. Um, I think this, this was a huge learning for us during this lockdown, huge learning. Right. That is so nice of you. I think that's a good, a positive takeaway for all of us. Uh, quickly, I'll go to um, uh, Neeraj sir on this and uh, if he has something to share. Uh, I think he... He just dropped out, actually. Satyajit sir, your take. Yeah. Again, uh, what uh, uh, Nipa said, I mean, it just summarizes the entire uh, 
occasional conversation as to you know like how artists uh, function and how they practice but uh, yeah so see the this is the first time that uh, like how many times have we ourselves said you know i wish i had the time to do this yeah of course there are financial difficulties that people are facing and one can't really like uh, negate that but uh, yes there is i mean one tries to look at the bright side of things because otherwise it, i mean what's the point of life but uh, yeah so the ability to maybe you know like upskill the ability to like learn a new skill um the ability to actually finally just go out there and like you know do what you actually wanted to do for a while yeah uh so that is something i think uh, that that's the only thing uh, that's the only take away that uh, suggestion that i could give uh apart from that my other suggestion which is a constant to all artists maintain a, an active instagram account and make sure that it's a public account if you have a private account there is no point of point. a private account as an artist because i can't see what you're doing completely completely <laughs> so that's a big take away i would say because until and if you don't reach out to the right audience there's no point of having an account right and like there are times you follow certain accounts and then there's no like acceptance of the follow request and then they like, like then there's no point, point of having an account completely everything yeah, comes so to like, zero that's yeah so yeah. and again we act upon it that's 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 about it because see here's the thing like uh, in terms of the uh, <laughs> two of the two of the uh, three shows that i just got done with in 2019 and 2020 uh, about 40% of the artists in those shows i met on instagram lovely uh, the exhibition that i'm putting up in jan feb uh, about 70% of the artists from that exhibition i met on instagram i have not met them in person i didn't know them before i just knew of their practice through instagram uh, and then you interact and you have a conversation that and that eventually leads somewhere so i think that's the that's the bigger that's my like standard uh, practice you know, practice yes. which is there. just maintain an active and uh, public instagram account that does that usually does the job so to before uh, before we close the session i have a very interesting question and uh, i am an uh, you know very inquisitive soul and this is to satyajit sir so this is like when i uh, when you say that you you have a conversation with artist you have just got to know them on instagram and then you you develop that okay this particular artist fits, fits best with my this particular project so uh, does that uh, does that come gradually or you think you have gone through and understand their work and it's a whole lot of research based so as a curator you think research is important or looking after their works and then planning your project how is it it's a one way process it's a two way process exhibition making i have always maintained is a collaborative effort and it's a collaborative job uh, you cannot put up exhibitions as an individual entity so that that answers the exhibition making part of things in terms of my curatorial process uh, i i my process again coming from an art history background and that too from a space like baroda which is like research oriented uh, my process is research oriented like i will have like for instance the print making show that i just got done with this uh, march luckily we wound up the show on the 50 15th of march and like right before the lockdown we were done with the entire thing but uh, that exhibition had over 60 to 70 artists across five sections two years of my time just went into research just pure research like i i had not met a single artist or i had not interacted with a single artist at that point it was just me doing my research and then it was after that that i had an interaction for about a year with various artists because again there were a lot of artists uh, there were about 180 works in that exhibition so uh, that when it re- when it went there when the exhibition making process started that is when the interaction with the artist started but uh, my personal process is that i i prefer to do my research in isolation and once i am very clear with what i think is my idea that is when i start interacting with artists and once you start interacting with artists of course you know like you come up with new ideas there is an exchange that takes place and then again there is you know like a permutation combination which takes place and then uh, finally cannot things have, fall in place yeah and for me personally i can't have a curatorial process without artist engagement 
uh, having said that, in terms of execution staging, I am an autocratic curator where I will not let anyone come into the process of staging. But when it comes to ideation, when it comes to uh, the conceptual premise, I think that is where uh, a two-way interaction for me personally is very important. Uh, staging is another story for me. Staging is something that I'm very clear about as to how I want it. And like, I try to get my way as much as possible. But uh, conceptualization is where I think an artist involvement is most definitely important and necessary. And of course, in terms of the afterlife, again, like once the exhibition is up, you need extensive artistic uh, involvement as well. So I think that's how I view it. That is so nice. I mean, uh, this has made so many questions clear. Personally, this session has been a win-win situation for me. Hearing Lubna ma'am, Satyajit sir, Nipa ma'am and Neerat sir. Uh, I Thank think, you. Uh, Akanshan, uh, just to, maybe you're not seeing on your screen. Uh, Neerat sir has come back on the screen in case you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed the uh, in between some important conversation where you guys were, you know, laughing and also uh, that part is missed. But again, when it is telecast, uh, Actually, one more thing I must say, that is the best part of this technology, that you can go and see it again. So, so true. This is what we are talking about, actually, from the real exhibitions to virtual ones. So this is, again, an advantage, actually. So one is not missing any knowledge part, actually, what have uh, been said or something like that. You know, you can store it, you can watch it. So that is an uh, another advantage of this medium. So true. That is such a good add-on to the closing uh, understanding of a question. I would really uh, thank you once again, each one of you for joining in and making this session so interactive. Yes, sir, one, please. One last word. One few last right, words. Sir. Yes, sir, please, please. Uh, when, uh, what I feel is that when everyone was, uh, you know, sitting home under lockdown situation and all, but one thing I will say, uh, you can quote it like a, a punchline maybe from my side, Creativity cannot be quarantined. So, so that is what I want you to say. So, and all the best to all the <laughs> artists, all of you. Thank you for inviting us here and giving such a lovely platform. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, each one of you. A heartfelt gratitude for joining in. You have made our evening with all the interesting conversations and key takeaways. We look forward for more collaborations. Take care. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.